Marcus Holman is the leading goal scorer in the PLL. No lacrosse player on the planet can shoot the ball quite like him. Today I'm going to play Marcus some of his best clips and get his first reactions to them so we can figure out what's going on inside his head when he plays lacrosse. I'm Jake with Lax Weekly and welcome to episode number two of Reacting to Highlights. Okay, Marcus, we got to start with one of the craziest goals I've ever seen. How did this happen? Yeah, looking back on it, you know, it's, I think I benefited from an awesome camera angle and the PLL slow-mo production. That's probably going to be like iconic for me, you know, when I hang them up. And you can see I go for an inside roll, but Chris Sabia does a pretty good job of like holding me up there. So when I just stuck my hands away, I was like, okay, my hands are free. Like, I think I have enough whip on my stick to be able to snap this around and kind of went for it. And truthfully, like I had practiced that a couple times, but it was better than I'd practiced it. Okay, now let's throw it back to the MLL when you scored 11 goals in a game. Guys, 11 goals. What? How? <laughs> yeah, first game of the MLL season. I took a red eye flight that night, so I slept on a plane. I was really just running on fumes, and I wouldn't recommend that to any player, but like it made me lock in a little bit more and focus. Just got to give credit to my teammates. Like, if you watch the goals that I scored that game, I think like nine of them were assisted. Yeah, I mean, it was crazy. Like, I, I remember kind of in the third quarter after I scored like my eighth, I was like, Dang, like, I'm feeling good right now. And honestly, looking back on it, like I think I should have scored a couple more, but that's an argument for another day. Okay, back to the PLL. This is one of my favorite plays where you're getting attacked, but then you make this incredible pass. Tell me about this. <sighs> So that's Pat Harbison, and Pat is awesome. Yeah, this was this is actually like one of my favorite clips from the whole season too. He obviously mangles me and holds me, and I don't know, I was just like feeling it, I guess. Like kind of stopped playing for a second, was like, yo, that's gotta be a flag, right? And then kind of snapped back into it. And I, then I felt that Glazner had slid to me, so in my head, I was like, okay, somebody's open. So I've been through kind of like a Tom Schreiber feed there. I'm definitely no Tom Schreiber, but I got a couple of tricks in my bag too, so. <laughs> I love it. Now, Marcus, everyone's been wanting to know, what do you think about the Archer's number one pick, now your teammate, Grant Amen? The kid's got, got game, man. Like, if you watch him play, you can tell that he just studies the game. It seems like he's one step ahead of, of the defense, and he's just a lax rat, you know? He, I talked to him on the phone yesterday after it was official that he got drafted to the Archers, and I think he just wants to be a, a really good pro. So I'm, I'm really excited and fired up to play with him. Yeah, I think the Archers are going to be unstoppable this year. How do you think Grant fits into that equation? He, he really is kind of like the missing piece to, to our Archers offense. We have Tom up top, who is the best player in the world now you add grant behind the cage who can, can score one-on-one -on -one, but his vision is unbelievable he knows that he still has to prove it at the, the professional level and he's, he's hungry to do that gosh i cannot wait to watch you guys in the championship series now let's bring it back to week one versus chrome when you had this nasty shot out of the role so this was from the first game of the season. I had like the wrong size shoe. So my shoe size, like half a size bigger than what I'm used to. So later on in this game, I actually ran out of my shoe. The beginning of that clip, I go to split dodge and I'm like stumbling over myself. But once I rolled back and I'm inside the arc, like I'm just shooting that thing high and hard. I try to teach my young shooters all the time or even my guys at Utah. Like if you can shoot out of the roll, it's really, really tough for a goalie to pick your stick up. Yes, I love this. And then the celebration too. Call that one like the quiet archer. You're just vertical. And then Will has the one where he like shoots it up into the crowd. But <laughs> So much good offense, Marcus. But let's talk about this great defense. Tell us, offensive-minded players, what to think about when maybe we're caught on the other side of the field. In this case, like, I know the scout on Salcedo, like, he loves to roll back for his right hand. So I tried to just time it up. And I feel like I did a really, really great job. And you can see in the clip, like, he holds my stick down. So I got called for a hold there. But in reality, I felt like that was just pretty good defense. So I was kind of pissed that they called a flag there, to be honest. Wow, I didn't even see that hold. You totally got robbed. It's all good. I'll get him next time. <laughs> well, let's bring it over here now to one of the weirdest sequences on a lacrosse field that I've ever seen. What was going on here? 
I was just ready and I saw Bones kick the ball forward and I felt my defender like guess to the corner. I think that's Jake Richard on me. Once he like jumped out of the way, I was like, all right, I'm just gonna turn and shoot this. No, that was definitely the first time that's ever happened to me. That's a, like the first time I've ever seen that, to be honest. And like, it was so crazy that when I caught it in my stick, I was like, there's no way Scotty's ready to save this. Cause like, it was so bang, bang. And I just turned and fired and was able to put it in. Okay, well, I watched this next goal here, and I feel like there's more to this than we think. You kind of hesitate with your hands here for a second. What were you thinking about? For sure, I, I think that's maybe an advancement of me as a shooter. Nine times out of 10, I catch this and just utilize my quick release, but I felt like I had enough time. I think what that little like extra half step does is just freeze the goalie. You can throw a goalie out of rhythm, that's gonna lead to an advantage for you as a shooter. So I felt like there with Troutner, like I had the time, so I just froze them a little bit more high and then I was able to just spike it five hole. Me and him have a, have a good little battle going. I'm excited to keep hopefully scoring on him this, this part. Yeah, and I've noticed so many of your shots use some sort of deception, whether you're looking one way and shooting another or using fakes, but why do you think you do this so much? That has just been a new new piece of my game because the goalies in the PLL are so talented. Like they study scouts, they know tendencies, like you're gonna get found out eventually. So I just try to mix it up. And this is kind of something I learned from Will Manny. He shoots that, like calls it a slider shot really well where like everything stays high, but at the last second you just snap it low. So I didn't have this until I practiced it and practiced it and practiced it and then felt confident enough to pull it out in the game. Yeah, I cannot imagine facing those PLL goalies, or honestly, PLL defenders. And right here, you're matched up on Jared Newman, the defensive player of the year. Tell me about this. You know, I, I wasn't really trying to do anything specifically. I felt like I had a step on him. You can see when I bring my hands back, I think he thought that I was just gonna shoot it. So he went for a check and I just timed it up really nicely. If I had one go-to move, it would be just getting up and, and trying to inside roll. The key with the inside roll is once I turn my body, you can see I bring my stick back, but I tuck it again because he goes for that trail check. And then I was able to kind of like finish over top of Lays' shoulder. Yeah, and I love the no celebration here. Just the smile after cashing one in. I mean, let's face it, man. I love scoring goals. Like, I still feel excited when I score one, you know, even after playing, what, seven years in the pros. Like, it still means a lot to me. I like scoring. I like when my teammates score. I like when we're having success. I love it. And now I think this play right here is a really good teaching point for all offensive lacrosse players trying to get better at moving off ball. So can you take me through your thought process here? What I'm thinking about a lot is just playing behind my defender's head. So if you like freeze it here, like I just cut right behind his head. There's so much open space on the crease that I saw. I was like, okay, I'm just gonna try to get to this area. You know, another thing I like to say is tougher the handle, the easier the finish. If you're on the crease and you have to handle a really, really tough pass, if you catch it, your, your likelihood of scoring goes way up. This was kind of a tough handle for me. And once I caught it, I was like, let's go. Let's just put this on cage. And Okay guys, real quick, would you mind if I sent you an email each week where I sent you lacrosse drills and film breakdowns to help you become the best player possible? If that answer is yes, please go join the last weekly email newsletter down in the description. Now let's get back into some more highlights. Yeah, and are you screaming for the ball right here? Probably not screaming for it, but like once I get around, I'll just show my stick. You know, I like to do a little like stick shake. And again, look at Will, his eyes are out. I mean, and that's a perfect feed. Got it. And now I want to throw it way back to 2014 when you were one of the youngest guys on Team USA. What was that experience like? Wow. Yeah, this is that's a great memory for me. Thanks for, for bringing that up. To be able to pursue that, you know, get through the first couple of rounds of tryouts and then continue to work and grind and make that final cut for the 2014 team really gave me a lot of confidence as a player. And then again, like I learned so much from guys like Paul and Max Seabold, like to be able to play with them. I grew up idolizing Paul Rabel and Kyle Harrison, you know, and be able to say that I've been teammates with both of them is, is pretty special. Yeah, and I remember the Iroquois game being kind of a crazy one, right? That's good memory too i'll bring up a point about that like we came out to this game against the iroquois and i would say like 80 percent of the stadium was rooting for the iroquois honestly it pissed a lot of us off for the game and we just came out like on fire yeah that was awesome and now let's throw it back even further to the flow to the twerton ceremony during your senior year that has to be a pretty incredible feeling to be a part of that what do you remember I actually got a haircut for this Tawaratan ceremony. It just goes to show how long it was. Wow, yeah, what a, what a special night to be able to be included with. Let me see if I can rattle these guys off. Tom Schreiber, Rob Pinnell, Jojo Morasco, me, and I think Lyle. 
wow, that is a stacked list right there. And we threw it back, but now let's go all the way forward to the PLL season again, where you get hung up behind the cage here. How did this play come about? I told my teammates, if I get hung up, like I'm just not great at feeding behind there. So if you just set a pick for me at goal line, I feel like something better is going to come out of it. And I just try to keep my upper body quiet. And then just, again, just snap that ball low. And then we got to show your first PLL goal. Describe to us the feeling of what that was like to get your first one. It was almost like a sigh of relief. It was like, okay, like I got one. Yeah, that was special. Yeah, I bet. And you're a player, but you're also a great coach for Utah. Here are some clips from Utah's first program win. What do you remember there? Yeah, so wow, another great memory. Thanks for pulling these clips up. This was, yeah, our, our first program win. I think that's Josh Stout wearing number one. But Josh is, is a Utah native. He wore number one for us for four years. He's, he's been our, our best player and leader. So to have him wear number one, he had six goals in this game. And then, you know, celebrate after with my dad, who's the head coach. Brings back some good memories for sure. And I'm so curious, which feeling is better, a win as a player or a win as a coach? Uh, honestly, like they both feel really, really good. Off the top of my head, like when you play well and you win, I think that's that trumps. But you know, when, you, when you're coaching and, and you're in a really tough game, and that's so gratifying as well. So as a player, winning a big game is like 1A, coach would be 1D. And we got to bring up these classic UNC highlights. I remember watching these so many times. What was your favorite memory of being a UNC lacrosse player? Yeah, it would it would be winning the ACC championship my senior year. We beat Virginia in a rainy game. We beat Duke on a Friday night in the semifinals, which is probably the most epic game of, of my entire career. It was just a culmination of a lot of things. Now I asked you guys to submit questions for me to ask Marcus, and we got over 70 responses. So unfortunately, Zoom's going to cut me off here pretty shortly, but let's run through as many as we can. First question, Marcus, why do you wear the number one? So I wear number one because I was one of the freshmen to pass the run test when I came in. So if you pass the run test, you were able to, to pick your number. And I was like, okay, like it's open. So it's a pretty cool number. I'll take that number. I took number one and, and never looked back. <laughs> okay, next question. What do you do for your pregame routine? What I started doing a couple years ago is just a couple rounds of like breathing meditation. So if we go out and warm up, we'll come back in the locker room and just put my legs up in my locker and just probably like a minute or two of just like really calming myself down and visualizing the entirety of the game, how it's going to feel when I walk out, how it's going to feel in the third quarter. I think visualization is such a huge piece for athletes and it's really not talked about a whole lot, but it, it's helped me um, with the mental side of my game. Okay, who's the best lacrosse player you've ever played with? I've been asked this question a couple times. Like, if I think of one, it's Tucker Durkin. We've we've had a great kind of rivalry. We played against each other in high school. So lucky to be able to call him a teammate with Team USA. He's really tough. He's really tough. He he checks super hard. Yeah, I am very happy. I will never have to face a Tucker Durkin check in my life. Now, who's the best attackman you've ever played with? Best attackman I've ever played with. I mean, historically, if I had to name one, I had two seasons with John Grant Jr., who I learned a lot from. I had a, a long career with Steel Stanwick, who just threw perfect feeds. Will Manny for the past year with the Archers, is special. Joey Sankey's up there, like Billy Bitter, Jimmy Bitter. I, it's hard for me to just name one because the bond that attackmen share with their unit is super tight, so I don't want to leave anybody out. Wow, you've definitely played with a lot of great people. This next question, how are you practicing despite all this quarantine stuff going on? For me, this has been, I think, and for everybody, it's been a little bit of a test of our will, right? Like the gym isn't open. It's it's not as easy as just getting in your car and going to the gym. It's been a good test to, to find out how much you care and how much you want to get better. So I've been out on the wall almost every day, like trying to get my legs stronger than I have in the past. I feel a little bit more explosive. My goal with this whole thing was to come out of this a beast and you know have a six pack. So I'm grinding my way there. Wow, guys, I had an absolute blast doing that. Marcus is one of the nicest guys I've ever met, and I could tell that over a Zoom call. I'm saying this right now, the Archers are my new favorite lacrosse team. I'm gonna be rooting for them so hard during the PLL Championship Series. Please let me know in the comments who you want to see next, and maybe if you wanna help me out a little bit, hit that subscribe button. I hope everyone has a great day. I'll see you next time.